So on to the next part of our tutorial. I'm going to show you how to um, change the defaults of the different shapes and so forth that we have. So beforehand, I already showed you that I uh, you, uh, use text boxes a lot. So I take a text box over here and I write, uh, you know, something in it. This is a text box. And there are several problems with this text box. Often when I make figures, um, I have really important to have this text box just uh, be a container with text and I want the text to be close by. I may add like a line over it. So if I click over here, I'm going to have a line around it and so forth. I need to know what the actual um, font is and different things like that. And so what I'm going to often do is I'm going to go uh, right click and choose format shape and that's going to open up this um, area over here on the right side, which has several options in it. The first one is this uh, kind of paint bucket that says fill in line. The second one is effects, and the third one is size and properties. Plus I have this one that says text options over here as well. So um, going back to the shape options, um, I'm gonna usually want the fill to be no fill on the text box. So if uh, your defaults for your system, which is often the case, I think I changed it over here somewhere on my system before, and that's why it doesn't show up but you get like a blue background or a red background and it's really annoying because you always have to remove it so what we're gonna do is have no fill I could have done that immediately over here just by selecting no fill there is a big difference between no fill and a white background no fill will have transparent background so uh, kind of try to use that okay and uh, then you have the line over here so the line has all kinds of options for example the color and if you see the color here maybe you can't see it but it's actually a dark blue and not a black and usually if I'm gonna want a line around my text box or something I'm going to want it black so either I would change that over here or change it um, over here to black and I have lots of different options for my line and so forth over here um, I actually want to remove the line over here so I'm going to do no outline and I just want to show you that like for example I'm making this text box smaller when I get over here all of a sudden box jump to the next line and I don't like that I want it to be really close there's a, a big margin over here and that I'm going to actually go and click this size and properties um, option over here and on the bottom I have this uh, button text box so when I go down to text box it has the left right top and bottom margin and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make those small I usually keep them at a 0.1 default okay um, I don't keep it zero so it's not like uh, if, I, if I add a line the line is still quite close but it's not um, really uh, ultimately close over here okay so I usually keep it at a 0 1.1 default but sometimes I do need to reduce it to be something smaller and now I want that to be on every new text box that is made so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a right click and again on the bottom over here I have actually something that says set as default text box so once I click that now um, as I saw this text box again has the 0.1 margins all over uh, and if I make another text box over here um, this is a new text box um, what I can see over here now is that already making it I get those default 0.1 margins Okay, uh, text box is a, a really nice way to put text inside a shape. Um, it's something that's often used. It has all kinds of um, capabilities of text, and it's a different type of an entity than a, other types of shapes. So, for example, if I take a square now over here or a rectangle oh, here, and you see that the rectangle is automatically filled with blue, which what I would usually want to do is I would want to remove that. Okay, so I would want to make it no fill. Um, but if I look at the text options inside, I see that they're still at the 0 0.25 and 0 0.13 over here. And if I start writing some text inside this, um, so this is really bad because you can't even see the text. And the reason you can't see the text is that the default text was white over here. So I'm going to turn it into black. And now you can see that I wrote this, um, writing this is a square uh, shape, a rectangle. Um, and it's actually very different from the text box over here and it doesn't have those defaults and the reason is because again a text box versus all the other shapes they're different entities so now i'm going to change this again to uh, the 0 0.1 default and um, 
and then I'm going to go and right click on this and I'm going to do set as default shape. And now if I make another rectangle over here, you see first of all it comes out without the uh, blue um, the blue inside and second of all I can write some text inside it. Um, so I write some text inside it and I can go over here and look and it's with this 0.1 default. Um, so that is true for the rectangle I made over here, um, but it's also true for other types of shapes. So in my uh, shape picker over here, which has a lot of great shapes, this is something, by the way, that I really like from PowerPoint over Visio because you do not have this option for some reason in Visio, and it gives you a lot of shapes that you can uh, make basic drawings with. So let's say I take a circle over here and I make the circle, and I want to write something inside. This is a circle. Um, I can also see that the circle over here, it has the defaults that I set for the rectangle. Um, so that's really nice. Um, and I just want to tell you that usually, so the default type of font that is used here, we can see um, if I go to the home, this chose something called Aptos Body. Um, often PowerPoint is set to something like Calibri. But really what I like to use is something that will go to most systems uh, by default. I don't know where this Aptos font came from, but it doesn't necessarily come with Windows. It could. Uh, and I, I really want to have something standard. And I use um, Ariel. So Ariel is a, a great font. It's a font that's uh, commonly used, and I really suggest using Ariel. So now I'm going to make this uh, the default uh, uh, shape. But I also should notice here that the um, the uh, I'm not sure that this is a black um, line over here. So I just change the shape to black, and let's set this as the default shape. So now. If I save this PowerPoint file, and every time I um, use it as a template to load, I will get this as the default shape. Um, another thing that I want to show you is that uh, the, the the line size. So uh, the line size, I'm going to set it with either this little button over here that you know shows me the different line sizes, or over here with the width over here. Um, and really, uh, an important thing is that when we make our drawings, I need to make sure that everything is very clearly visible, especially when it's uh, zoomed out often in the articles and so forth. We're going to put it in, you know, a two column format. The, uh, the picture that we're making in this uh, large slide is going to be very small. I want the text to be very clear and I want the, um, the lines to be very clear. So usually use something like a two point or at least a one and a half point default for your, um, for your uh, shapes to have them be the line. Don't use what usually comes as a default in PowerPoint, which is 1 or 0.5. It doesn't look nice uh, when you, especially when you put it as a small picture that's uh, inside another article or print it. Um, you want to have, you know, nice thick lines. So don't, uh, you know, don't be bashful about using thick lines. Another thing I want to show you is that when I took the Ariel font, and it will be different from for different fonts, I have quite a bit of space between the two, um, the two lines over here. So the circle went down to the second line. And and often I want to save space to get something to fit inside a smaller area or in general it's just kind of big so I can actually reduce that pretty easily so again uh, selecting this uh, this shape over here I go over and I have this uh, line spacing feature so it's under the home tab it's the line spacing feature I can also get to it uh, through the paragraph uh, I believe well, not here, but on Word, I guess I can. Anyway, I uh, click on that, and I can choose the line spacing, and I'll choose line spacing options. And this is a lot of clicks, so really it's worthwhile saving it as uh, the default. Okay, and in line spacing, I go click uh, multiple, or uh, exactly, but usually I do multiple, and I take this down to about 0.9 or even 0.85. Okay, you see it brought circle a little bit closer to the this is, it's not too close, so it doesn't look like these things are overlapping. You can go even a bit lower. So this is what I usually keep for a default. And again, right click and set as default shape. Now, this is not gonna be the same for the text box. So I make the text box over here smaller. You see that it's this big thing. So again, I have to go over here, line spacing options, choose multiple and go 0.85. And you will see that now I have that. It's still also Aptos body, so let's change it to Ariel which appears over here. And uh, now I have this uh, nice text box over here. Um, and I want to make that the default shape. Default text box, excuse me.
Well, actually, I did something bad because usually I'm going to want the text boxes without the line around it. So let's remove the line over here. Oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, go over here and remove the line and then save this as the default text box. Okay, so I have two entities. I have the text box and I have the shape. So all of these different shapes will actually um, uh, behave as, uh, as I just said as a default. But there is a third type of entity. Maybe there are more. Uh, I haven't found them out yet. And that is a line. So again, with this uh, shape picker, I have a line and I have an arrow and different types of lines that you can see over here. And I'm going to be using lines a lot. So I take a line and I make a line and you see it comes out a little bit blue and so forth and it gives me these options to change it and play around with it over here well for sure i'm going to want this to be uh, a black line okay and again um, if your default is under 1.5 points you should make it um, something like 1.5 points maybe even two points and make this as the default line so the next line that i make even if it's an arrow or something like that it will come out um, like that Okay, um, with lines in general, we have quite a few options over here. Okay, so um, not only do we have the color, um, we have the compound type. So that means I can make a double line or something like that. Not used as often, I would say, but dash types is used a lot. And there are different types of dashes, so you can play around with them to get uh, the one that you want it to, to show up. And it really depends on how long your line is and how thick it is and so forth, uh, what it's going to look like. You also have the arrows, so I want to add an arrow here and I can add an arrow to the front or the back of the line. Now, um, the thing is, it depends on how I made the line. So I pulled the line from over here to over here. So this would be the begin side and this would be the end side. So if I want an arrow over here, I have to choose the begin arrow type and there are different types of arrows that I can add here. So this is a really kind of nice, nice looking arrow, but um, sometimes it's best to just use the kind of standard one. The one that I really dislike is this one. Okay, it kind of is ugly, but um, so usually you kind of use this type of a one and you can also change the sizes, which will make it look differently. So I can make it have a big head or a smaller head and I can have the end arrow type be completely different. Um, I can have that be something like this. Okay, so I have a big circle over here and, a, uh, and an arrow head over here. Um, do not save this as the default, and the reason being is that every line you'll make will have an arrow uh, as it. But you can always go and just uh, click on a certain shape or a line or whatever, and you can use the format painter. So that's this uh, dot over here or this icon, or it's over here under home, I can click on that and then go click on the other shape and it will turn my line um, into the same format as here. And it's really important that you guys um, make sure that all the lines and all the arrows and so forth in your figure, they are formatted the same. You don't have inconsistencies because that looks really unprofessional. So now that I have set up these defaults for my text boxes, my shapes, and my lines, what I want to do is I want to save my, uh, my, my presentation. And the reason I want to save my presentation is that now when I want to make a new presentation, I will open up a presentation. And let's say it was a different one. I made a copy of it, and I make a new figure. And again, I take a line, and you see my line is nice and black and thick. And my uh, shape is has a nice big thick black line around it and when I write inside it it's going to have um, you know the Ariel um, text and it, I can get it really close to it uh, I, I don't have this well I guess that's under more more for the text box but I don't have as much space over there um, and so uh, uh, where's my text box over there okay I can make a text box that says something 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 right and um, I can make my text box get pretty close to the F before it jumps over there and so forth and when it does jump I have a, a close space over here so I, I have my defaults and I can continue building from where I started with my thick lines and my default margins and so forth and so on so that's a really good place to start from a last comment over here you can see that i took um, the shape over here and i started writing inside and i can do that with any shape basically here's a nice little heart here and i can write heart inside um, you can edit that by double clicking over here or just by pressing f2 um, a lot 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 of people do something that drives me crazy so they will make an arrow right and then go and they will make a text box that says arrow and then go and stick that text box in here and now I have two shapes and maybe I have to group them or something like that. Why not 
at most in most cases just use the built-in functionality of PowerPoint where I can write arrow inside here. So um, I don't know why, but many, many, many people I work with have these extra shapes that are really crowding around our whole PowerPoint and I can't do things like easily centering and, and uh, different types of things like that. So really use the built-in text inside a shape if, um, if there's no reason not to.